I see um, every day what's happening with students, with staff, with parents, with learners, with employers on, on the ground at, at UTC Reading. Um, we're a brand new establishment, um, an incredibly exciting movement, I think, the University Technical Colleges. We are looking specifically at the vocational piece, but not just in terms of the vocational piece for those students who do not suit the academic route. And I think there's a big common misconception about what is suitable and what are vocational qualifications and who they are for versus the academic route. And we have got some enormously bright, intelligent youngsters following vocational courses. And I think for me that is one of the key messages that I would really like somebody somewhere to take on and actually start to tell some teachers. I mean, I was appalled when I read the, the report before we, we you know, the, the briefing report today. And, and it said that lots of teachers would not dream of talking to bright students about a vocational qualification. And I think that that, in some respect, is a very sad state to be. And, and for me, means that we need to really look at the careers education uh, and how that's developed. And of course, that also means, I am a teacher, a qualified teacher, that also means we're expecting teachers to be careers advisors too. And, and therein is, a, is another issue that I think we need to look at very carefully. So at a university technical college, which is where I'm from, I talk to students all the time. And lots of them say, what's a BTEC when they come to a taste today? They've never heard of a BTEC. Their parents have never heard of a BTEC. And they first of all say, will the universities take students with BTECs? And I think that that's a really key point. And I really welcomed the conversation and, and the speech from Ed Miliband this morning talking about making te technical degrees at university level because parents then will start to see that actually there's something for them to go on for, onto afterwards. We talk a lot to students about uh, the mix between the academic and the vocational. We do not at a university technical college, certainly not uh, uni university technical college in Reading, we do not have students only on vocational pathways or only on technical routes or, or on academic routes. They do a mix of both. I've got students who will get A's in A-level maths and an A in an A-level physics, but will have a BTEC qualification. Why, you might say, why mix it all up? Why make it even more complicated? because employers tell us that that is what they want. They want us to offer the students BTEC qualifications because they can get engaged. This is, a, this is an absolute win-win. I've been in education for 20 years, trying to encourage employers to work with, with the previous schools that I've worked at. Absolutely failed, failed miserably. Suddenly, the University Technical College movement, I've got employers knocking at my door saying, how can I come and work with you I want your youngsters to come and work for us in the future. I want to help develop the skills for your students. And that's fascinating. I thought this was going to be the hardest point for me. I thought it was going to be one of my biggest challenges, apart from recruitment at 14, but that's another issue. Um, but it's not. Actually, it's the easiest bit of my job because we've suddenly made it straightforward for employers. The employers come to us and I say, you can help in one of three ways. You can come and, and do a project for us that every single youngster in the UTC will get involved in, and it will involve your real life, um, real life, um, excuse me, I've lost it there. It will involve a real life case study and scenario from your workplace that our students will replicate here with the help of your staff mentoring them. The students are developing fantastic communication skills, fantastic uh, team building, project management skills like I've never seen in 14 and 15 year olds before. And the employers are saying, I'm watching that student, I want them to work for me in the future. This is amazing. The second strand of how we're working with employers is to make sure that um, the students and the BTEC qualifications, the BTEC qualifications and the units that we deliver are relevant to the employers in our area. And I think that's really important. It's a really straightforward thing for employers to get involved in. Write us a case study. Write an assignment which is really relevant to your workplace and get the students to do it. When the students are doing it, they're getting the, the information from your workplace. They suddenly start to know the SME names in the area and companies that they might want to go and work for, raising the profile of the SMEs too. What they will also get from that is an amazing careers advice. They're doing suddenly a piece of work which comes straight from the industry or the employer partner straight into the classroom environment and they don't even realise they're getting careers advice but they suddenly know whether that actually suits them or not. And the third thing which many of our industry partners work with us on is just coming in and delivering a one-off short burst skills session. 
our youngsters are getting qualifications on their CVs that you don't normally get until you go in the workplace. And for me, I think that that's what's important in this space here. You know, we can talk academic qualifications, we can talk vocational qualifications, and I think that, you know, I, I, I like to talk about technical qualifications. You know, what's in the technical space? But our students also have professional qualifications. And I think this is a real key to improving the quality of voca vocational qualifications. And certainly at, at the BTEX and through Pearson, you can, you can do vendor qualifications and vendor units in the vocational qualifications. And actually, if you can get a CCNA that, that is well known across the networking environment of IT, which is the area that we work in, and you get that as part of your BTEC qualification, which is a professional qualification that that industry recognises, then surely that's putting the vocational qualification on a par, if in my eyes, not even higher than the academic route. Those students are going to employees and saying, I've got this and... I've got this professional qualification, which means you don't have to train me. I'm work ready. Not only have I done that, but I've got all these team building skills. I've got a project management course. How can we fit all of that in? And I think Leslie said, how can we fit all of that in physically? Well, at UTCs, of course, we do a 37-hour week for the students, so we can fit it all in easily. Um, staff might teach a little bit more than 25 hours, uh, admittedly. But I, I do think that... There are areas in the educational landscape at the moment which are moving this debate in the right direction. University technology colleges are not the right answer for everybody. And this is what I say when I talk to parents and students. Come to us if you've got a passion for what we're specialising in. Come to us if you know you want to work in the sectors that we're specialising in. And come to us with your eyes open, knowing that you're going to work with our employer partners to get you ready for the workspace. Whether that is at 16, 18, 25, 28, whenever you've finished your study, you're building up those skills to go to the workplace. One of the areas, though, that I would like to see some movement on is how universities look at accepting students who have a mix of the academic and the vocational. If you've done a full vocational course and you've got you know, distinctions across the board, the universities will take you. If you've done the academic route and you've got A's across the boards, the universities will take you. What if you've got a mixed economy? Where does that work? Do the bridges and ladders we talked about earlier really work? Because that sounded to me like you were just moving from one to the other, but you had a bridge to move. What happens if you stop in the middle of the bridge and you take a bit of both and you pick off the best of both worlds? And I think that the key for me is making sure that the youngsters are ready for the workplace and they're rounded individuals and they've got everything that we need. I also think that there's a great issue in terms of the number of vocational qualifications. Way too many. Let's get them down to a, a small number that everybody trusts and we all know what, what that really, really means. But also um, looking at those vocational education and, and thinking about where's the quality and how do we make sure employers understand it? Because there's a huge gap there. And, and finally, I think the last point I would like to make is, why on earth are we training up five times too many hair and beauticians? What's that about? Why are we spending our public money educating students who are not going to get work because there's no work there for them? When are we going to think about how we're using the funding mechanism to commission courses that we actually need for the areas and the country in general? And I think that, you know, from a UT's point, UTC's point of view and from somebody who sits and talks to parents and students, employers all the time, schools, UTCs, FE colleges, universities, we are all here for one reason and one reason only, and that is to get people ready for the workplace. So let's not forget that. That's the most important thing. It's not league tables. If we get the education right, the league tables will just look after themselves. How do we get students ready for the workplace? And I think that's all I want to say. Thank you.